You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 9th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we have tried and failed to nunberg our way onto cable TV for years. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. The professional left with drip glass and blue gal. Yeah, you and I uh, don't have those problems. <laughs> I, I, that would said, be a blessing and a curse, drip glass. Or as I would have said an hour ago, from you alive from my headquarters of Coffee Resistance. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to make fun of anyone who has alcohol uh, no, no, addiction I, issues, you know. I had Novocaine. Oh, yeah, that's right. You had Novocaine today. You, ha- you are back from the dentist. That's right. So I'm I'm recovering from that. I wasn't making fun of anyone's anything other no. than my own inability to feel <laughs> inability to feel face. your own tongue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Sam Nunberg uh, had a meltdown this week. He did. Uh, quite a. The, it seems like three weeks ago, as everything always does. And um, I do believe, and and people, you know, after the fact, have come to this conclusion as well that he got a an attorney bill on Monday morning and freaked out because if, uh, you know, Mueller and his people want to sit down with Sam Nunberg and go over every email in his uh, Gmail account. In his porn stash. Is and his porn stash about. and his whatever, uh, with with counsel present, with somebody he's paying by the hour, uh, Washington, D.C. level wages, uh, nobody can afford that. And well, he can't. He sure can. He sure can. not And uh, we heard that um, General Flynn this week sold his house to pay legal fees. Yeah. And when he gets down to selling his kidneys, then I'll get it. Yeah. No, I I have no sympathy for these lock him up, lock her up guys. Lock her up. Lock, lock her, her up. up. Lock. You know, that put Hillary Clinton on trial and were judge, jury, and executioner basically uh, for political smearing and no other reason, with no no actual criminal intent or anything behind it. Uh, just you know, she's a powerful woman, so she must. She is a criminal in their eyes because ha- being a woman and having power and having uh, authority is against their law. So um, happy International Women's Day, Drift Glass. By the way, we're recording this on International Women's Day. And and in that spirit, happy birthday, Mom. And happy birthday to Drift Glass's mom. She's a fabulous woman. A fabulous woman. Yeah, her birthday is Saturday. And uh, (laughs) a a pure delight to be around. She is. She's the best mother-in-law I've ever had. (laughs) I think even my first husband would agree. She's a very, very, very nice lady and smart and uh, solid. She's she is um, spiritually solid person. I like her a lot. So uh, very cool and happy birthday and many happy returns to your mom. And Uh, we're also uh, we also have a a a regular sponsor, but they've added a new feature. If you'd like me to go into, I would. It 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 dovetails with with Mr. Nunberg in a bad way, and I don't want to I don't want to talk about I don't want to cross the streams here. Let's finish talking about Nunberg before we talk about the sponsor. Sir, because sure. Nunberg did have an alcohol problem this week. And uh, so making fun of him, making fun of Sam Nunberg uh, took a turn because yeah. you don't want to make fun of somebody who's got an addiction issue or uh, an, an alcohol consumption problem. Uh, and so there's that. But well, it does seem to, pre- to me as though the Trump people uh, hung him out to dry long before he started talking and yeah. that he was well, not it, in their in their orbit. Really. It opens up a, a, a more of a discussion. Mm-hmm. Like, um, where was the vetting on Sam Nunberg? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and well, guy, Roger Stone and, and, said he was OK. Yeah, where so, was the right. On? That's the point. They they there's no reputable person yeah. going to work for this this racist lying hustler. Well, so and, and his mob usual boss, New yeah. York mob crew. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they all moved into the White House together. You know, like the Beverly Hillbillies, they mm-hmm. all went. They moved to Beverly. They moved to the White House. Got set up in there. And all of them um, regressed to their normal state, but mm-hmm. they regressed through the normal operating state in the public spotlight. Right, and right. That is what they were not used to. So I, I am terribly sorry if Min- Mr. Nunberg has an alcohol, a drug problem. Um, he also has a right wing scumbag problem, <laughs> yes. which there is no rehab for, as far as I'm able to tell. There's no way out of it. You can live in denial. You can go. You can join yeah. Rick Wilson. 
and mm-hmm. pretending it never happened. Right. Or you're not part of it. Yep. But this is a guy who during the interview said, oh, if I'd been in charge of the campaign, I would have brought out uh, I would have brought up Bill Clinton's illegitimate black baby and, you right. know, right. on and on and on. Right. This is an absolute gumbag who got who got the shit scared out of him because suddenly he's now in the spotlight. He and is accountable. Like, yeah. He's accountable. And he's got to, to go through and he's making up some bullshit about protecting Roger Stone when actually he's protecting his bank account. Right. Maybe he's doing both. But this is Don Segretti mm. from, from Watergate. And you should explain that because we, we have heard from listeners this week who, um, to my chagrin, feel that you and I are in their um, parents' uh, age bracket. <laughs> I didn't know I was getting that old, but I am that old. So. Well, as you, all of you might know, we, we call this stupid Watergate. Many, many people do. Yeah. Uh, but because there was a thing called Watergate. And one of the minor players in Watergate was a guy named Don Segretti. Don Segretti was in charge of doing dirty tricks for the Republicans. Um, and it, it, he uh, he called it rat fucking. Yeah. And there's a lovely scene in All the President's Men where he is confronted in his apartment by uh, Carl Bernstein. And he just can't figure out what he did that was so wrong. Um, he just did some stuff, just some stuff. I just did some stuff. And he's sitting there thinking, and I'm, I'm a good lawyer. He says, where's the effect? I'm a, I'm a lawyer, Carl. I'm a good lawyer, and I'm probably going to go to jail. And he doesn't know what he did that was so wrong because he doesn't have a conscience. Because right. his his thing was screwing your opponent using dirty tricks. And that was Roger Stone's thing. And that's Sam Nunberg's thing. And that that was Carl Rove's thing. That was Lee Atwater's thing. This is how Republicans win. They win by going as deeper into the sewer than anyone thinks they would dare to do. Yeah, and they think yeah. that that's the normal way of doing business and doing politics and is you, you this, screw your opponent because this is a dirty business. So, yeah, of course you do. And if you just listen to Sam Nunberg for five minutes, you can tell this is the guy they keep in the basement of the law firm. Right. You know, he graduated some, I don't know, two-bit law, uh, law school that was was um, accredited a minute ago. Right. So he, he, he is a lawyer, but he's the guy you keep in the basement to, to just latch on to things with both hands and never give up. He's the asshole that you keep down there to, to drive – uh, to just litigate, just pound and pound and pound, who will never give up. He doesn't have a conscience, and uh, that that that's why he found a very uh, a, a home in the Republican Party because he's perfect for that. But now he's in the spotlight. spotlight. Well, I was going to say the minute he said Roger Stone is my mentor, you said, "Oh wow, <laughs> you're really you're really one of the lowest feeding monsters in this whole administration." Well, and, and the Trump administration went out of their way to hire people like this. Well, and and Drift Glass, this is what I wanted to talk to you about from the standpoint of your business experience. I don't have a lot of business experience, but I have been in uh, meetings or on rare occasion where, you know, I'm invited to sit in the back of the room where CEOs are talking and they do talk to one another. And when they don't think anyone who would judge them is listening and say things like, well, at this level, we don't take those kind of rules seriously. Or oh, at yeah. this at, at the level that we're at, you know, we let the lawyers handle that. Yeah. And it's it I absolutely feel that the whole Trump administration came out of that Manhattan real estate. Sure, we take cash from Russian oligarchs. Sure, we t- sure we uh, grease the wheels on on construction, and sure we keep the blacks out. So, you know, during uh, show day where we're going to show all our high end condos, right? Uh, we do all of these things that are immoral, illegal, reprehensible. Because at this level, that's the business we're in, and, and- you see that if when you start looking for that, you see it everywhere. You know that people on cable news talk to them themselves that way. You know that people in the uh, upstairs suites at MSNBC talk to themselves that way. And it's just at this level, you know, we don't worry about the hoi polloi, right? We don't worry about average people um, unless it's sweeps week and we have to have something salacious to talk about. And there's a salacious story down at some lower level where we're going to slum it. Yeah. If you, if you right? Google Carl Palladino. Yeah. There you go. You know, that's that is the that is the typical mindset of the mid-level Republican business owning douchebag. Mm-hmm. Um, and and here's the thing: they transact a lot of their uh, business. They pass the dirty postcards around through email. Yeah, these guys are always passing each other porn and uh, jokes about black people and mm-hmm. jokes about transgender people and jokes about Barack Obama, where you know the the racism is not in any way hidden at all. Right. They're right. a bunch. They're they're fucking Archie Bunker. Yep. And they're fucking Archie Bunker with money 
and with social media and with email. And this is how they talk among themselves. Yep. And they know they got to dress it up when they go out in public. But there is no doubt in my mind that, that this is not a big secret. And when when the, the emails they go through um, that are going to be traded between Mr. Nunberg and mm-hmm. Mr. Stone, mm-hmm. there's gonna be a whole lot of horse porn in there. Sure. <laughs> There's going to be a whole lot of unbelievably racist shit that's just casual because this is their casual vocabulary. This is how yeah. they talk to each other. Yeah. And the the, uh, the the clip you cut from me from The Alienist. Yes, that you posted, this right? this exceptionally well. Because mm-hmm. there's, there's this great big mystery. We'll get into uh, the New York Times, the Abed page, et cetera, in a little bit. But the, the question is always, how the fuck do these people keep their nose in the news? Mm-hmm. How, do, how do people who are patently wrong about everything, how are people who are this shitty and awful stay in power? How does how, do, how does Barry Weiss get a job at the New York Times? How does David Brooks keep his job at the New York Times? And the answer is, go see the alienist. <laughs> the answer yeah. is this. You know, there's a, a, a lovely scene where the former chief of police is explaining. Well, let's explain what the alienist is. It's a TV show on TNT that we've been watching yeah. and it is a murder mystery uh involving it's based on the novel by Caleb Carr uh based on uh it has real life characters in it like uh Teddy Roosevelt Teddy Roosevelt and, in uh, New York City being uh he is a police commissioner I believe yep. and uh the newly these, formed police commissioner new po- newly, for, formed police. newly formed uh scientific police commissioner someone who is progressive and he has under him uh a group of young reformer types including a woman who in the late 19th century is that's unusual and they are investigating the a serial killer and that's really all we need to say yeah but but of course of course there are policemen and there are wealthy people and there are all kinds of characters with various levels of power uh attempting to cover this crime up for various reasons and uh, it is discovered in the course of this show that they are in part one of the people they're protecting is a rich person for various reasons they they need to protect this rich person and there i have i have tried to do that with zero spoilers uh but there's a wonderful scene no spoilers uh a wonderful scene where one uh person in the police department is talking to another and this clip is up it's, it's a one minute clip that's up at drift glass's blog where he basically says to one to another cop we don't work for the American people or the people of this city or average people. We work for rich people. We serve the rich. <laughs> we serve the rich. That's it. <laughs> we serve the because the rich were put on earth by God to raise us above the primordial filth. Yep. And they don't they think of us and he's talking about the cop the same way they think about the the thugs and gangsters and prostitutes that we keep them protected from. Yeah. We're all yeah. just animals, all just mm-hmm. dumb animals. Mm-hmm. And as long but as God help us if we don't do our job and exactly. protect the rich people. And yes. As long as they have money, our job is to do what they tell us to do. Right. And right. that ethos uh, is absolutely alive and well in New York. Mm-hmm. Washington D.C. Right, the tops of corporation where the whole the Acela corridor, yep, is to is to serve a small handful of incredibly rich people who want to believe a certain thing is true. Yep, and so yep. they they don't want to believe that Donald Trump and their entire Republican Party and all their Republican friends and all their rich Republican relatives are corrupt racist scumbag well and they don't want to believe in that that donald trump they may they may at this point totally have the mask off of donald trump vulgar but it's not a republican he's vulgar exactly and he's not a real republican and what they don't want to admit is that he was ever part of of someone because he had money was ever part of a class of people that they sucked up to and mika brzezinski did plenty of sucking and so did you know a whole bunch of people over at MSNBC, a whole bunch of sucking up to Donald Trump. They sure as hell did. Because he's New York and he's money and he's real estate and he's glamour and he's red carpet and he'll give to their charities and, and, and. And he's an awful person, but we'll put up with him because he's got money. Because he's going to give, he's going to write a check for $100,000 to my favorite charity and I'm doing this fashion show. And that happened. I mean, Mika Brzezinski and her sister emceed a fashion show for hospital kids, cancer, kids cancer research you know whatever some sort of children's charity in new york city and that culture is there so that rich women can wear their fancy dresses 
<laughs> you know, have some place to wear their fancy dresses and be photographed and be uh, glamorous. But it's for charity. That's how at this level, it's all for charity, right? right. And it's again, it's, it's at, at this level we do these things for charity. And Donald Trump will. I, I call Donald and he'll write me a check. And but it's not his check. It's his foundation's check. It's a cat tax write off. It's you know, it's not. He's not being uh, generous with his money. And uh, they needed him and sucked off of his power and money of course and and uh notoriety and so n- when he's the celebrity candidate we're just gonna have him on and let him phone in interviews because donald yeah. you know oh donald he's a- and you've been great supporters i mean not personally of me but you know what i mean yeah nod nod wink wink i'll always be on your show uh and and now that he has shit the bed yeah. and actually won the won the election and is a terrible president the worst president and is, ever and is everything liberals warned he would be and everything liberals warned he would be and everything like everyone Bush. knew he would be just like george Bush. Bush. I, I, yep. I do want to focus on liberal. Just yeah, like George yeah. Bush, uh, just like we knew they would treat Barack Obama, yep. we now have an unbroken record of some 30 years of liberals being right about virtually everything. And that's why the difference between 1883 or 1890 or whenever it was going to be, whenever the show is set, and now, is that there was a very strict class system that was enforced uh, brutally by cops cracking heads. Mm-hmm. And now it's a little, it's a lot more dangerous because every now and then an interloper shows up like a Michelle Goldberg mm-hmm. and punches Tom Brokaw in the face. On TV. On TV. And everyone just sort of sits there going, oh shit, are we all fired? Because we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed to say that. We're never supposed to say that. Everyone involved in the charade that is the media knows what the rules are. Mm-hmm. Everyone. They have to. I, I As you said, I've, I've I've been in business before. I've worked in the public sector, in the private sector, education sector. I've, I've been close to management. And you, there are certain things about working in a dysfunctional environment that are always true. Mm-hmm. And one of the things is there's a bubble of dysfunction or there's an entire organizational dysfunction. And rule number one is you don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. That's when you know you're in a dysfunctional organization, when something really fucking weird, screwed up, bad, um, awful, uh, brutal, sadistic is happening three cubicles over, and no one is supposed to talk about it. Right. Everyone knows it's there. Everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone knows they're getting away with it. No one talks about it because they're protected. Every time you see Joe Scarborough or Mika or Brooks or any of these people, Michael Gerson, name, to pick a name out of a hat, with a position, a mighty position in the media, an extremely pro, uh, pronounced prominent position in the in the media that is paid for by somebody. They're getting a check from the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or, or Comcast or somebody is paying them a shitload of money to be there doing the thing they're doing. There is a, a, a vast rock set up to make sure those people are never confronted by anything. Mm-hmm. Never ask any questions. Um, what, what the class system used to take care of that. Nobody would think to go up to, you know, a, a person of great power and a authority and call them an asshole to their face. Right. But someone might walk up to David Brooks and call him a liar in a public venue, mm-hmm. as happened when I happened to be there and film it. And he right. just shit himself. He didn't know what to do because no one is supposed to do that. No one's supposed to call us out. And I have no secret insight into the media. I don't have any friends who whisper in my ear. But I do have a brain and a memory, and I can I can deduce things about dysfunctional organizations. And when you look at the media, there's very clearly a lot of rich people who are being served who don't want their pet bothered by the hoi polloi. Right. And that that's why you will never see uh, anyone like Brooks or Gerson or anybody like that, uh, even David Frum or, or any one of these people, sitting across from an actual liberal who has the receipt. Well, and, and you mentioned Michelle Goldberg. Uh, that was a segment... Uh, where it was on Meet the Press Daily with, you know, Chuck Todd. God, who was... Chuck Todd was honored to have Tom Brokaw there. We'll just and... talk about beautiful people he knows in Ohio. <laughs> I, know of, I know a lot of Republicans. Of course you do. Everyone you know is a fucking Republican. Yeah, You're a right. fucking Republican. And John and... Podhoritz on the other side. My good friend John. From Podhoritz. National Review. Oh, and in the middle there is Michelle Goldberg. Yes, who just very quietly, patiently And, and she, she was self-effacing. She started off by saying, maybe I'm just naive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> By the way, they're talking about Gary Cohn's resignation. Right. All right. That's that was the topic. And it, and and while she's saying maybe I'm being naive, she's slipping her shoe off because she's about to beat something with it. <laughs> she's very, about very to hard. knock all the dust, as you said. <laughs> yeah. All the, the dust little, off of Tom Brokaw. Off the Here we go. Of Tom Brokaw. <laughs> And uh, she said, maybe I'm naive, but I don't I really don't understand why you would think that saying Nazis are good people in Charlottesville right. and excusing the behavior of alt-right uh, white supremacists right. 
was okay, but tariffs was a bridge too far. That was your red line. It wasn't the Nazi thing. Yeah, it was. The white it supremacist was supremacist thing. It was aluminum tariffs mm-hmm. are are your thing. And would you really, really? And and, and she was uh, visibly puzzled. Right. Really, you would you would sacrifice your. Uh, self uh, respect and go along with Nazism for a tax cut. Really? And, and that's when John Tom. Podhoretz, well, first of all, yeah, Tom Rokoff, I don't think that's fair to, that's to really Gary Cohn. Uh, Gary Cohn, let me, let, me, let me mention, he's, you know, he's with Goldman Sachs, you know. Goldman Sachs are solid. Goldman Sachs, they're solid. They're solid. solid. You, you really know, care about I, the economy and fiscal to policy. Be fair, you're being unfair because he wasn't the Charlottesville guy. <laughs> well, that's what John Van Horitz said. He yeah. said, you got to remember what, what Gary Cohn's portfolio was. Not, he's not the Charlottesville portfolio. He's the fiscal policy portfolio. The, so you compartmentalize the... so that you don't have to touch the Nazi part of Donald Trump. Oh, he was the money guy. Right. Right. Okay, so the money thing offended him, but not the Nazi Nazi thing. thing. And and hey, you know that's where Germany was in 1935. Let me tell you, no problem. Uh, but it really did. She she took her moment. Yep. And and Tom Brokaw looked like he really had shit himself. Well, and, and he also looked like he was going to talk to his agent about making sure he didn't have to sit next to this <clears throat> again. This yeah. Child who's making me look. Like, and he just looked befuddled. Well, and thing. held He's up not... the words. He held up the words Goldman Sachs like a magic talisman to keep her away you know goldman sachs goldman sachs goldman sachs if i say it three times i get a check for forty thousand dollars right don't you know who's paying paying for these cameras don't you realize (laughs) you're paying for these fucking cameras don't you know who is put into office every single time and and this was barack obama too this is who you put in charge of the economy goldman sachs because this is at this level at this level this is who runs the world. And it wasn't that he was angry. Deep breath. <laughs> I need to take a deep breath right now. <laughs> I, I, let, uh, well, it wasn't that Tom Brokaw was angry. He was completely befuddled. Yeah, who would bring this like up? Yeah. You, there, now, you know there's a bunch of rules, you know. There's, there's a Maybe she didn't know the rule. There's things you're not supposed to Well, and, and the topic was Gary Cohn, not Charlottesville. Right. Because Charlottesville was another news cycle. Right. We're not talking about Charlottesville anymore. That is the thing that Donald Trump gets about media. That is one of the reasons, apart from an utterly complicit Congress, another reason that he is still in office today is the total short attention span of cable news. Yep. So uh, let's go on and talk about our fake sponsor. Now, I think we've stepped away far enough away from yes. um, uh, Sam Nunberg's drinking problem. <laughs> well, we're about to step back in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, the good Lord, the people from the, where, where the good Lord split you, the emergency party planning supply. Emergency uh, now, farewell party planners. Yes. Party. <clears throat> uh, as we mentioned last week, uh, are now offering a, you're going to need a bigger cake family discount for large groups of people who are all heading to the exit. Uh, Including your idiot son-in-law. <laughs> son-in-law. Maybe your daughter, uh, maybe your spokesperson, maybe their friends, maybe your Gary Cohn. All of your pets and children are marching off to the exit. Uh-huh. And where the good Lord split you always has a bigger cake available if you decide to fire three more people before the first cake arrives. Yeah. I want to observe the, the immediate need of what's going on in Washington today. The good Lord, the people of good Lord split you have gotten their liquor license. All right. Yeah. So now they're offering a going away beverage service, which is great because that's really important now. This week, their featured specials are Beat You to the Pun, <laughs> uh, which is a bracing quit before they fire you cocktail. Oh, wow. So, and uh, and uh, this week's special is the Nunberg Kamikaze. Oh, no. Uh, which is 16 ounces of vodka and, and a little bit of Zoloft around the rim. <laughs> and then you and then you set it on fire and watch it burn. Set it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much the one. Serve flambe style. So, Good Lord Split is always ready for you with the there. Beat You to the Punch, Quit Before They Fire You cocktail, and the Nunberg Kamikaze. Order it today at the Good Lord Split you Emergency Farewell Party Planner. Offer code Hope Floats a book. Yes, yeah. Remember her? Do you think, do you, no, she was last week. Do you, do you th- how, how many days do you think uh, Huckabee Sanders has now? Oh, do you think? Jesus, I don't know. Uh... Because she's in the doghouse, you know, now. Yeah. They're all in the doghouse. Yeah. That's the thing. They're all in the doghouse. She, she made the terrible mistake of, of saying the word Donald Trump won uh, yesterday. Uh, this is worked recording on Thursday. Uh, she made the mistake of saying he uh, won. <laughs> he, he won the uh, case arbitration. at arbitration. Right. He won the arbitration. Yes. So we're not which talking about it. Then everyone said. Oh, arbitration, really? That's public. That's public. We can we can put that up as a PDF 
on our website. Yeah. NBC put that up as a PDF. Now, you know, you can always get one of Manafort's people to convert it for you to a Word document. Sure. They're good at that. <laughs> They're really good at that. But it's up, the whole thing, the whole uh, document, three pages, is up at uh, NBC's website. And it basically gives all of the power to uh, David Davidson. <laughs> David Davidson. <laughs> John, one of John Barron's close personal friends. Yeah, John Barron, friend of John Barron. And uh, he didn't sign it, though. No. Mr. Davidson, a.k.a. Donald Trump, apparently didn't sign this document or this agreement. And so Stormy Daniels is now suing Donald Trump. Yeah, well, he, he breached his non the, the, Every the, For those of you who are not 100% up on this, pretty much everyone in Trump's orbit has to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Right. I mean, his, his children, his dog, if he had a dog, would ha they're all um, lawyer paper protection for anything I say, anything I do, anytime I grab your ass, anytime I, I, I take out my dick and wave it in your face, anytime I make a racist remark, anytime I cut a deal with Vladimir Putin to destroy America, you can't talk about it. Sign on the dotted line. And they do because they, they want that money. That's, mm -hmm. that's the condition. It's, it is a prenuptial agreement for everyone who works for him. Mm -hmm. And But the problem is you have to abide by it. And he didn't sign it, so he didn't abide by it, which means he breached it, which means she was suddenly free to talk about all the shit he really didn't want to talk about, especially right before the election. Right. And, and so now she is doing the very smart thing, uh, which is she's not asking Donald Trump for money. No. She's not suing for money. No. She's just suing for a release from the NDA because she can sell those pictures oh, yeah. of Donald Trump's teeny teeny weenie yep. for much more than Donald Trump would be willing to pay her not to do it. <laughs> this is the dance of the seven fails. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's slowly doing a strip tease because yeah. um, the, the, it was 12 days before the election. Uh, this is public record now. She threatened to cancel it and spill the beans because Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, you know, Another mob moron, uh, thug lawyer. Yeah. Uh, the best failed. people. He he hires the best people to play. Blew the deadline. Because these, these are the only people he knows. Literally, this is, these are the yeah. only people Donald Trump knows are the yeah. worst people in the world. Yeah. So those are the only people that who brought into his government. And let's remember, 93% of the Republican Party is perfectly okay with all of this. They're perfect. They love this guy. They love every minute of it. All of this is a, a dream to them. It's all some sort of liberal conspiracy. They never hear about any of this shit on Fox. Um, they live in a completely separate compartmentalized reality. And uh, that's the problem. Really, the much larger problem is uh, those people. Those people are, are, are the problem. But the specific problem today is that uh, Michael Cohen blew the deadline. So suddenly, uh, <laughs> they, just before the election, she holds them up for money. Yep. Now, paying her off to be quiet about an affair because it would affect the campaign is A, a campaign contribution, and B, I believe that's what uh, got um, uh, what's his name? John, uh, I drew a blank. John, Ed John Edwards, yes. That's what, he got, that's what got, got him prosecuted. Yep. Uh, yep. So, suddenly, we're in, we're in a very different place because on, on the one end of the spectrum, you have Vladimir Putin and the entire Russian infrastructure clearly with their hooks into everyone in the Trump administration, probably including the big dummy himself. Mm -hmm. On the other end, you have <laughs> a stripper. You have a porn star who's who's squeezing him the other direction. And in the middle, you have Sarah Sanders trying to lie every day, all the time, about everything. Because that's the only thing that's keeping the reality at bay for the for the people that still think Trump is is legitimate and and love him is just lie constantly. She made the mistake of admitting that something was arbitrated. Yep. Well, what was it? It was arbitrated. Uh, We've got it right here. <laughs> NBC has it right here. <laughs> and that's when it all that's when the wheels came off. So they did I come off no because all of a sudden, if something is arbitrated that means there was something to arbitrate and that and that you know porn star then had a legitimate reason to uh sign a deal while donald trump is president of the united states to arbitrate this so this is not campaign this is not back in new york this is not an affair when when you know his wife had just given birth 11 years ago this is now <laughs> and uh, shit's hitting the fan. I, I want to take a moment here, Drift Glass. Please, because what's privilege? Because we, we all need to check in with one another from time to time. Yes. There there are times during the day when I can talk about this and laugh and and make jokes about it and how, how incompetent this president is and this White House is and they're going down and they're in trouble. And then there are times when I just weep because this is my country and I and they're getting away with it because of Fox News and because of a Republican Congress that completely uh, is completely complicit with this administration and just yeah. doesn't care uh, and has has abused power for 
two decades to get to this point, at least, maybe three. Yep. Yep. And I don't know how to react to that except to keep fighting, uh, particularly just locally, just do what I can locally yep. uh, to flip the congressional seat in which I sit. <laughs> and, <laughs> I believe you were working hard on we're that. We're working hard to do that. Uh, but um, I saw a, a sign on the Internet someone had made, and it was one of these big, huge banner signs that uh, are in a parade where three or four people have to hold them, hold it up. And at the top of the sign, it said, this nightmare must end. And it was almost as if someone had given me a dose of oxygen. It was like I could breathe again because I realized, oh, I'm not alone. <laughs> this nightmare must end. And it must end so that we can have health care that's stable and we don't have to worry about it all the time. They're, they're trying again. Uh, the Trump White House is trying again to write rules for insurance companies to punish people over 50 yep. and, and allow insurance companies to charge people over 50 exorbitant amount, to charge people with pre-existing conditions exorbitant amounts. So I'm like, are we going to have to fight this again? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All over again. All over again. And uh, the congressional candidate that you and I are supporting is... Um, Betsy Londrigan uh, had her own health care issue with her son, who uh, was in the hospital for many days and is fine now. But uh, it, without insurance, it would have bankrupted her family. She would have lost her house and because it was it was serious. And uh, she, she, we heard her give a speech just last night, and it was all about health care. I mean, it was just all about you have to make sure your kids can get their medicine. That's what we're here to fight for. Your kids can get their medicine. And I just felt like somebody gets it, that all of the anxiety that I've had, you know, I can I can I can look at a lot of this from the standpoint of a clown show. And from that perspective, um, let it roll off my I have to let it, a lot of it roll off my back because I just go to bed and never get out of bed again if I did. But some of this stuff is so personal that I can't. And so evil. Yeah. And it's so evil. So There's no reason for it. Other There's than, no reason for it. Yep. Um, well, yep. I, I, and I it's, a, a, it's the same with immigration. It's the same with education. Uh, it, the cruelty, the it is about being mean to people. It is about being mean to anyone who's not like me and, take, and take childish policy. bullying. Yep. Take any public policy. And, and, and you'll find the Republican position is maximally cruel to the weakest people yep. just for the sake of, of hurting people. Of being and, power, and feeling that that's power. Yeah. This is the part. And, and I, too, react the same way. I mean, I don't curl up um, as often as I should and cry, uh, but I feel the urge more more and more. And uh, what I do is I, I laugh and kind of shrug, mm -hmm. not because I'm checking out, not because I'm apathetic, not because I'm not going to do everything I can do to change it, not because I'm gonna, not going to use any platform anyone will give me or anyone I can beg, borrow, or steal to talk about these important issues. It is that um, my angle into this has always been, look at how fucked up the media is. Yep. I mean, look at how, how, compl how deeply complicit these people are because none of this affects them. None of this affects them at all. Yep. So it's a yep. game to them. And they are using their privileged position as owners of television, cable news networks, and owners of newspapers and so forth to promulgate a both side risk. What about is, you know, what about an independent party? Everyone's equally bad. Look how, look how crazy those campus kids are. They're fascist too. Agenda specifically designed to keep people apathetic yep. and to keep people at home. And to make them shrug and go, well, everyone's corrupt, everyone's broken. Well, and the conversation with John Podhoritz and, and Tom Brokaw and Chuck Todd was they didn't want to talk about a Nazi in the White House or a Nazi sympathizer in the White House. They wanted to talk about the problem, the political problem of, well, now who's going to want to work in the White House? Right. And I kept thinking, why is that the issue instead of what is this due to economic policy? Right. Right. Well, who's going to work in the White House? Will anyone work in the White House? And I realized, oh, this is about who is on your phone so that you can earn your $7 million a month or whatever as the political director of NBC News so that you can earn your uh, millions of dollars uh, on the phone getting your contacts to come on Meet the Press Sunday. And That's if it. no one will work in the White House and you can't get anyone from the Republican Congress to come on and talk about Stormy Daniels or Gary Co why Gary Cohn quit or who will work in the White House, you know, there was it was they didn't get they, the Congress is being utterly silent about all of it. Oh, Mitch McConnell is just skipping right past. Gun yep, yep. Just not even, we're not even going to talk about that. We're just going to go on to, to banking. And how banking, to yes. Uh, um, but and a whole lot of red state Democrats are going along with that, which is pathetic. Well, and, and yeah, there, but there's yeah. such a, this is my side of it is there's such a clear and deep personal 
financial and psychological yeah. investment by so many people with yep. so much power in not yep. fixing this problem. Because to fix it, you have to name it. And once you name it, mm -hmm. you have to accept your complicity in it. Yep. And, and they are using every media um, lever they own to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. And that means stacking the New York Times op-ed page with with a bunch of David Brooks's in various guises. Mm -hmm. It means mm -hmm. making sure that 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 the kind of conversation we saw leaking through with Michelle Goldberg never happened because because yeah. they can't let this problem be fixed. Because if it gets fixed, that means the Republican Party itself goes on trial. And they can, Did you feel that having Michelle? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Did you feel that having Michelle Goldberg then the next day on the Chris Hayes show and and she was sitting with uh, Malcolm Nance, I believe, on yeah. one side. <laughs> Um, and and I I can't remember the whole panel, but, but that was an attagur. Was that? A, did you feel like that was a reward or a punishment? Reward. Okay, that was a pat on the back. But it, it's also, but see that that's the thing is the the powerlessness that you and I feel over the politics of this. Like, how do we fix this? How mm -hmm. do we fix? How do we fix people who just just fucking won't get it? They mm -hmm. won't stop being cruel. I feel the same way about. How do you fix a media that will not stop lying? Yeah, it just keeps yeah. hiring clones of David fucking Brook and and won't answer my letters, won't answer phone calls, won't respond in any way. They just don't respond. There's yeah. just there's just no acknowledgement that there's an opinion outside of the New York, Washington, D.C. Metroplex mm -hmm. that is that, that is anyone. They speak in great sweeping terms about this country. They know nothing about this country, but they yeah. control such an enormous amount of influential lensing on issues and there's they're so clearly dedicated to lying about it that I often just laugh. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. I, yeah. I, I, it's it's clear there's a big fucking forest fire out here, and you are sitting at the fire station, smelling the smoke, playing tiddlywinks, and arguing over what direction the wind is going to blow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's and it and it's been burning for twenty years, and the people who who are in charge, who's supposed to be in charge of our First Amendment institutions, have completely given up on. Don't are not interested in that at all. They're interested in protecting. The corporations for which they work. And it is maddening because every now and then some little brick that I've been pounding on that wall for 20 years or for, for 13 years now uh, jogs loop. Yep. And I, I do wonder, well, wait a minute. If, if you if you can acknowledge for one minute that, that this opinion that Michelle Goldberg had is a valid one. Mm -hmm. And actually, it gives you some insight into what's really the problem. Why not just put her on and get rid of Tom fucking Brokaw? Yep. And the answer is because the people who pay my fucking salary don't want to hear from her. She scares the shit out of them. They want to hear from Tom Brokaw, who will tell them everything's fine. Everything's fine. The problem is a couple of fringe people on the right and a couple of crazy college kids who shout down legitimate points of view on campus. That's the extent of our problem. Mm -hmm. Everything else mm -hmm. can be solved by, by, by white men in closed rooms settling this shit quietly. And uh, Drift Class, I want to I want to interrupt you again. I'm sorry to keep interrupting you. <laughs> Women's Day, honey. Come it's right Women's now. Day. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I get one day a year. Isn't that yeah. not? <laughs> Yay. First of all, I want you to I want everyone to know that I am wearing my podcast co-host sleeveless top. Uh, <laughs> It's trended on Twitter this week. Someone decided to sell a uh, embroidered sleeveless top and call it the podcast co-host top. Okay, so we've arrived, Drew Class. That's, we're in yeah. fashion now. Fashion. Uh, I want. I. 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 I re, uh, I'm sorry. I hesitate to bring this up because uh, the first thing I noticed on my screen was that there's a new thing trending on Twitter. And it's Uranium One. And I went, oh, no, not Uranium One. But uh, no, the Democrats have released a whole bunch of information uh, that blows a hole in the Republican hopes of undercutting the Mueller probe with fake Hillary Uranium One scandal. Uh, the Uranium One informant that has had tons of coverage on Fox, I'm reading from different tweets here, and other right-wing media, uh, the thinking being that the Uranium One informant had the goods on Hillary Rodham Clinton when he actually got to a hearing, Democratic staff say Campbell was unable to point to anything to support his claims that the review process has been improperly influenced uh, other than the fact that the deal went through. <laughs> That's the only evidence he had that Hillary Clinton had anything to do with it was, well, you know, the deal went through, so it had to be Hillary, right? It had to be corrupt because she was she was there and it went through. When asked point blank whether he had any evidence that Russian influence on the Clinton affected the review of the Uranium One deal, Mr. Campbell stated that that was outside his pay grade. Yeah, OK. Now, now. <laughs> 
That's that's great. Now that we're doing this live, right? We're doing this right. live. This is trending yeah. on Twitter right now. Yeah. What's my response going to be? You're going to shrug your shoulders. Yeah. Won't yep. make any difference at all. Won't make yep. any difference. It won't. At all. This will never be seen on Fox News. The, the, and this uh, is something that came to me very clearly this week because this was the week when I was required uh, to watch more Fox News than I usually do. <laughs> For the job. For the job. Pause, honey. And Pause. I realized that um, I know we all know exactly what Fox News is going to do when the Democrats take over the Congress and when the Democrats take over the White House because they haven't changed. Hannity is talking about Louis Farrakhan every night. Yes, and, and who else is? The Washington Post. And California and how it, it is nonstop sanctuary city. Right. It's a shithole in California. It's going to be, it's going to be, if it's not Seth Rich, it'll be Fast and Furious. It'll be FISA. It'll be yeah. Oakland being a hellhole and all the homeless people in Oakland and and how California politics is going to invade America well, with all their well, illegals, yeah. and uh, it's going to be the IRS is abusing conservative and Hillary emails and Uranium One and so, Bo Bergdahl no, so, and so you stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, got it. yeah, I'm over. I'm overloading you now. Well, it's just, but they're, uh, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. The they're yeah. not going to have to switch one little click. Yeah, yeah. Now, so now, and now that in that moment, mm -hmm. that moment is the story. Mm -hmm. Why is it, Chuck Todd? There are sixty some odd million Americans who are completely fucking impervious to reason. Mm -hmm. Why the hell isn't that a story? And the answer is because that's too that's too frightening. Yeah, that's too scary. Because because our advertisers would insist that I get fired because those people buy the products that my corporation sells. Right. And I'm not right. And they own stock in each other. People yep. Yep. By calling them out yep. as the problem, even though they are clearly the problem. I'm not going to let anyone on my show who does it. I'm not. There's, there's going to be no one in the newspaper who's going to be allowed to do it. We're not allowed to call fascists fascists because that's bad for business. Right. And, and my portfolio over at Goldman Sachs is doing very well for me. Don't you agree, Tom? And, and we'll, we'll bring people <laughs> on. We'll bring contrarian Republicans on. If you want yeah. a liberal point of view, we'll put R Rick Wilson on television. Yeah, sure. Or, you know, we'll, we'll put Brett Stevens. And, and they'll talk about how this is Trumpism. And yep. Trumpism this, Trumpism Trumpism. No, no, Trumpism. No. And there'll be nobody there. There'll be no one there to point out that all of this is a, is a, is a puppet show. Yeah. It's all about you. So um, I don't know what to talk about it now or never, but I would like to mention the story of Noah's Ark and MAGA. Okay. Uh, here's what I think we ought to do is write down mm -hmm. Noah's Ark and MAGA. It's, no, it, at we're end. at 4921, and I have to pick up Middle Child in about 17 minutes. Okay. So um, what I'd like you to do is type that up uh, at the top of the line, and then we'll do that and News Roundup and finish uh, in part two of our recording. Either, uh, it, you have a meeting, so probably after your meeting, I would yeah. imagine. That, that's, a, that's a wonderful idea. All right. You know I love you very much. You know I love you like crazy, right? Okay. I'm not, I hope I didn't overload you too much. No, no. It, but it, it, I, but you, is, you get it. <laughs> no, no, but this is, this, now, this is something our readers, our listeners might be interested in. Mm -hmm. This is not uh, me patriarchically as much as it might sound that way. Shutting up your wife? my wife to be quiet. This is <laughs> sensing yeah. that when my wife is very close to the point where she really needs to be yeah. Um, yeah. remove herself from the situation. Yeah. No, he, he, he is very good at, pull, as I've said many times before, pulling me off of Twitter, although I'm, I have internalized that to a great extent in the, since Lent, uh, okay. just saying, oh, I'm not working it right now. I don't have to be on Twitter. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just he's good at watching my moods because I am more emotional than he is. And Drift Glass is just very good at saying, you know, self-care involves you removing yourself from this situation. I, I do yeah. this because I do it at the request of my beloved wife. Yep. Yep. And because he loves me and he doesn't want to see me uh, devolve into a sobbing mess, because uh, that's not good for me either. It, it was, it, no, but I care very much, folks. I really and I know there's a lot of people out there who cry with me when we're going through, you know, some emotional things with whether it's health insurance or bills or whatever it is. Um, and and. The reason I do this show, and I don't know, I'm not speaking for Dirk Glass on this one, but the reason I do this show is the relationships that I've built up uh, with many listeners over the course of the 400 plus episodes we've done. And uh, you guys make me feel less alone. So thank you for listening and thank you for being there for us. We appreciate it. I do it to get into the Merriam-Webster dictionary. <laughs> All right. We're going to stop there and you bring that up when we come back. I will. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, by the way, we've switched over to a new day because we yeah. decided you cannot podcast on Thursday and not include Friday's news dump. Um, so, But there was something that you wanted to talk about uh, yesterday, Drift Glass. Yeah, uh, before we get to the news roundup, um, I want to talk about two things. Mm-hmm. First is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary once again. Um, <laughs> I made it as a joke as a tail out yesterday, but yes, dumpster fire has been added to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And that is something that you coined in 2006. Right. As far as we know, that is the earliest reference to dumpster fire on the Internet that we have found. As, as anything. Right. Uh, but specifically, I, I was referring to a political disaster. I believe it was Tom DeLay. Right. But I have the post. I have comments, literally uh, contemporaneous comments that were written in the post, uh, beneath the post of referencing that line. Uh, I've used it before. Uh, it, it got rolled up into a Huffington Post uh, mention of the origins of this word mm-hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. Because it was word of the year or something a couple yeah. years, you know, during the Trump thing. So. And, and everyone can sort and it was like, well, we think it's sort of here, but we're not really sure. I'm like, no, it's really simple. It's right here. There's no earlier version of it. This isn't that hard. Of course, I'm a foul mouth liberal blogger. So no. Really and if you if it if it had been, I mean, this is this is our downfall, really. If right. there had been an earlier reference in a Daily Coast post or somewhere or even a Daily Caller post, right. we would acknowledge that. Yes, we would. <laughs> Absolutely, we would. We wouldn't call that fake news. We say, "Oh, okay, 2005. Somebody else said it. Okay, you know." In this particular case, it's it. I coined it. I coined it on a very specific date on a very specific topic. I hit publish. It's done. It's in the record book. Um, and I looked, and I got a whole bunch of incoming emails and a couple of tweets saying, "Hey, look at this. It's it's in the dictionary now." And the earliest reference they could find was 2008. Yeah. Fuck you. And it was, we're not sure where this came from or, yeah. And I have, I, I have emailed and uh, tweeted, and, but I've emailed the people at CNN who reported the story. I've emailed, there's an actual feedback page at the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. I've sent them my link. I don't expect to hear anything back. Well, from maybe if a few uh, 50 or so uh, podcast listeners said something yes. to CNN on Twitter, yes. that'd be um, nice. But It would be. You know, if you if you Google, uh, hey, what's that poo smell? Um, <laughs> hey, what's that poo smell? Two thousand six. It was a David Brooks post. Okay. Uh, so you know it was me. That's my signature. And I coined an actual term. I've coined a lot of terms, but this one actually made it all the way into the American, you know, standard dictionary. And it is um, there's something I take I take it kind of personally. That, yeah. Well, you should um, take it kind of personally because it is, and it's playing on a liberal, um, a broader liberal. Um, bruise that a lot of us have, which is all the shit we've been right about all this time. Yeah. We can't get any fucking credit for it. No, I know. We're the and Cassandras. Because, it's it's our lot in life to be Cassandras. So. Because if we got credited for it, then we have to acknowledge it's been going on a really long and time. And we have to take, we, and, and the left has to be taken seriously as something other than the extreme balance right. to the extreme right. Yeah, okay. And, well, and we're and not going to whine about that, though. No, no. No, no, but it, that's the thread that you don't want to pull, right? Because eventually, because the, the, everything I unravels. <laughs> because I, I do care about the fact that if they ever started taking what we said seriously, you'd immediately have to sack about three quarters of all the people no who work in television news because they've all known this has been a shit pile. They've all known this has been a disaster all this time, and they've all gone along with it because that's what they get paid. It's to lucrative, do. yes. Drift class. What what's the thing with Noah's Ark? Second thing, and this has been grinding on me all week, Blue Gal. Okay. Um, I, I'm not gonna. Uh, quote any names or date because that would be wrong. Mm-hmm. But we were at a thing uh, earlier uh, in the week that was a putatively religious thing. Yes. It was, it was faith-based, let's say. Yes. Um, and it was very pleasant and mm-hmm. all of it was very pleasant. But um, as part of the uh, thing we were at, which was not a, not a prayer service, but it was definitely religious based. Um, one of our hosts uh, wanted to tell the story of Noah's Ark, which is fine. That's great. But the way they told it was uh, Noah didn't get the Ark done on time because government regulation. <laughs> it was a long joke. It was, but it was a long, really, really obnoxious uh, story yeah. about how the, the EPA wouldn't let him cut down any wood because of the spotted <laughs> owl. And the government regulators wouldn't let him do this and wouldn't let him do that and wouldn't let him do so on and so forth. Ha, 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 ha. And, it, and it went yeah. fucking on and on and we get it. We get the joke. And at the end, God said, well, I'm not going to destroy the earth. And Noah said, oh, that's really nice of you. He said, no, because the government's doing it for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you ever wonder how deep in the bone marrow this MAGA shit is, yeah. that government is the problem and government – it is this is their common vocabulary at an occasion that normally would have this would never have come up it's not okay anymore for these kind of people to to joke openly about black people to say n word or uh, yeah 
Even, and now it's no, it's no longer, you're no longer allowed to say that bitch or that whatever. You're not allowed to denigrate women, gays, uh, people of color, people yeah, et cetera. But you can say government. And, and, right? and, or people will protest you on campus, which right. apparently bothers uh, the New York Times awful. editorial page yeah. really, really a lot. Seriously. But here's, the, here's what you can do. You can insult liberals and blame the government and treat the government like Nazis. Right. Blame them for everything. And, yeah. and this is just the laziest possible uh, end product. Of 30, 40 years of letting this shit get out of hand, mm -hmm. letting people like Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh and Hate Radio and Fox News tell these same people every single fucking day that every problem you have on this earth is caused by the government and liberals. Mm -hmm. And no one being and no one being allowed anywhere near a microphone or a dictionary for that matter, uh, who, who, who will push back, yep. who, will, who, will, who will do what Paul Wellstone did, yeah. which was right. come across the table during a debate when his opponent was mocking him for being a teacher, saying, what the fuck is wrong with being a teacher? The teacher's yep. honorable profession what what the hell is wrong with you yep, Mark, yep. we need people who will put their finger in their chest of these people mm -hmm. and say what the fuck is wrong with you yep and and but those people those kind of angry people those kind of folks are never allowed on the, on television are not allowed near radio microphones so the the only narrative you hear is that well we can all agree i think government's full of corrupt monsters it's the government so yeah yeah and even though these the all these folks are government employees by the way retirees <laughs> Who's, who's the party that is cruelly and brutally and fascistically in favor of using the government to help poor people? Oh, the liberals. The Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, yeah. it's all part and parcel. And yeah. it just it ground on me all week that this that it it didn't occur to anyone. It would it would cause jaws to drop mm -hmm. if any like that. If I were to stand up and say, you know what the problem in this country is? Fucking Republicans. Yep. They're toxic scumbags. They're brainwashed idiots. They, they believe horrifying things, and every time something blows up in their face, they wave their hands and say, well, both sides, and they go off to the next fucking lie. Yeah, that yeah. That causes people to freak the fuck out. But it's perfectly acceptable. And, and and here's one other thing, and I'll get off my soapbox. I have I have all I can't remember the last time I initiated a political conversation with anyone mm -hmm. in my civilian life. Yep. They always feel very free to come up to me and say, you know what those liberals did this time? Yeah. Yeah. Just out yeah. of the fucking blue sky. Well, that's a that's a fox phenomenon. It's well, that they well, think they're the only it you know, it's the old it's the old joke, another old joke about Baptists and hell, Heaven's Elevator and how you have to be very quiet at floor four because Baptists think they're the only ones there. You know, they think everybody is a conservative. Everybody obviously f agrees with us because Fox News has the best ratings ever, you know, and, and so, it's... And because, because they're so comfortable uh, just starting a conversation with, can you believe what those goddamn Democrats did this time? Yeah. I, yeah. I had a, a conversation like that yesterday. Just someone decided to drop into a conversation, mm -hmm. uh, some, some slam against Democrats, broadly speaking. And it because it's their normal vocabulary. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. It's, it is time for us to speak up, you know, and and, 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 and start with up, the words porn star. When we speak up, <laughs> when we speak up loudly and clearly, yeah. uh, Barry White. And, yeah, I know. And I know. Fred Stevens yeah. Yeah. And David Brooks will all write columns. Antifa is silencing free speech. The campus, yeah. the campus radicals, the true existential threat to our democracy. Yeah, well, we, are from students on five campuses. Okay, but Drift Glass, if we are sure of ourselves as the moral majority, you know, I'm not in favor of kids getting shot in school. No, I'm not. I'm really not. You know, I'm really against that. And the slaughter lobby doesn't have my vote. So maybe you're going to vote with the slaughter lobby, and maybe you're going to vote to kick grandma out of her nursing home. You know, I when would, you... <laughs> I would you accept your tone, Blue Gal. It's your tone. Well, it's my tone. tone uh, so fast, I took a uh, junior is... dude back to college on Sunday, and you have to drive up through Peoria. You know, Peoria, Illinois, you have to drive through Peoria to get up to Augustana College, where Junior Dude is going to school. So we always stop for lunch in Peoria. And, you know, that's that's some white farm country, conservative farm country right there. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to a, a sit-down restaurant, because it's a nice thing to do when he's with me, to just take a few minutes and say goodbye and so forth. And all around us, and this was Sunday afternoon, but I overheard more than one conversation there mm -hmm. about so-and-so's Medicaid mm -hmm. and how she was going to need to make sure when she retired that her retirement didn't stop her Medicaid, if she retired early, I mean, these were the kind of conversations. It, two conversations about finagling your pension, finagling your retirement, finagling your uh, income so that you continue to get the government benefits you have now. Right. Mm -hmm. And this this is an issue of survival. I get it that 
a widow or a single woman or whoever it is, and this, these were both women talking about other women in this case, uh, need to figure out their income and need to figure out how they're going to pay for the roof over their head. I get that. Uh, but you don't then turn around and vote Republican. And you, you just don't. And these conversations are being held in a vacuum of that connection. Yes, it is. Just, yes, yes, they are. I don't have to, I don't have to, I can go home and watch Hannity, and I can go home and be all upset about uh, sanctuary cities in California. Oh, my God, you know. There are all these moochers and at the same time go to lunch in a restaurant uh, and and, uh, you know, sit down and pay for it and still be uh, negotiating the terms by which I continue to receive government benefits with no sense of uh, of, of being two faced. No, why would you know, no hypocrisy. So no, no there's no hypocrisy. But it's because there's the special people. Yeah, well, and that's it. Money. And and they this is this it. is what happened in the 70s. I mean, if we're going to go back and remember the past, no. is Johnson's war on poverty, the difference between Johnson's war on poverty and El and um FDR's war on poverty and all of the programs in the 50s after the war, yep. you know, the GI bill for housing didn't apply to black people. If you want to talk about where reparations need to to be, African American veterans and their descendants should all get a house. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, just give them a house uh, because that is a place where actual government discrimination yes. uh, based on skin color uh, affected the overall wealth of an entire race of American yes. citizens who had served this country. And oh, the o- so then you the get into war. The and po- I'm sorry. Ter- oh, huh? The opening up of the Oklahoma Territory. The, right. The sooner. Right. Right. Uh, you know, giving away land. Except, except it wasn't theirs to give away. Yes, well, exactly. Well, gave it away to uh, white people. Yep, yep. Well, and, and so with the war on poverty with LBJ and in the 70s when you had an, a, a literal army of social workers and people coming out of liberal arts programs in the 60s and coming out of the protest movements of the 60s and the civil rights movement of the 60s, actually uh, selling and advocating for, yes, you deserve this program apply for this program, get this rent subsidy, get this housing help, get this food help. And you had social workers going out into communities and making sure that people who ordinarily wouldn't apply for these programs applied for these programs. And then Reagan comes along because you can't have the government is the problem. Government is is allowing moochers not to work. And it's not because people are mooching. It's because the wrong people are getting the benefit of these programs because yeah. who's poor and who's poor is again because of discrimination 30 years earlier. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a story and, uh, and a history and we have to remember the past. Uh, I want to get into the news roundup cause we're yes. just running out of time, but, uh, thanks for, thanks for listening to us folks. <laughs> and let's and get into the news roundup. The news. Uh, so, Can I just start with Anthony Scaramucci? Please do. Opening his Jump fucking in. pie hole as a classless douchebag who has no skills except to be the mooch. That's his skill. Yeah, I'm the mooch, man. I don't need no skills. I'm the mooch. And he sat on the crotch couch over at Fox and Friends today and uh, decided to use the word suppository against liberals. You know, they all need a suppository. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Exactly. Well, he's, he could be offending half the audience, but since the Fox and Friends went, oh, you know, they let him get away with it and they feigned outrage at him saying it. Oh, my gosh. That's just shocking. And then he goes on the Twitter and apologizes for saying that because it was just a lighthearted joke, you know, and it was it was directed at Rachel Maddow. So uh, everybody loved that. Ha ha. And so uh, he just, uh, you know, he has a shine box career. What can I say? He's a well, no been- talent. Uh, well, low life. Well, then what did he do after that? He's yeah, he went on Katie boss. Tour because he's a whore. He went on Katie Tour <laughs> and wanted a fist bump from her because they agreed on this one thing. And right. He, no, he, she wouldn't give him a, she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't give him a fist bump. I'm not going to touch you, Anthony. I might catch something. But you put him on your fucking show. You put him on your show, though, because it fills up a segment and he's willing to wear a suit and say the right thing to fill up the segment. And when the segment's over, he's already spoken in the right number well, of words and system. time slot. Comcast yeah. has a quota system. You have to put X number of conservatives. Seriously. You know, scumbags like that on television or we will pull your fucking contract. Well, and he's oh. he's he's got his knees a little closer together on Katie Tour than he does on the crotch couch where, you know, you can spread them wide and, and uh, let it all hang out. He was, uh, you know, talking about the American people on Katie Tour. And the, American the American people. people. The American people are well aware of Donald Trump's private life. And they really, you know, we know he won the election based on, you know, what's baked into the cake. You know, the you know what's not baked into the cake, Driftlass? Everyone's going to use those words, that Donald Trump's private life 
is baked into the cake and people already know that he's a womanizing scumbag. And so that doesn't affect poll numbers or anything. You know what's not baked into the cake? Donald Trump being president of the United States. That wasn't baked into the cake of acceptance of Donald Trump because nobody thought he was going to win. So you can interview him and you can have him on your morning show and you can have him phone in interviews and you can do all that. Ha ha ha. Good for ratings. And both sides. And we can both side it. And, you know, uh, Mark Halperin can say, well, he could win, you know. And uh, Brian, what was it? Joe Scarborough just reamed into Brian Williams for going hard on, on his little pet, Mark Halperin, because Mark Halperin said he could win. And uh, Brian Williams said, you're just going all out for Trump. You know, you to a fault, you continually push for Trump. Yes, he does. And he and did. And then the next morning, Joe Scarborough had a First class fit on the air about how dare other people impugn your character, Mark Halperin, by saying Donald Trump might win. Yes. Okay. Uh, long story short, Anthony Scaramucci has no class. No. And, we, and, but we knew that. But he does have um, a TV ability. <laughs> he does. He has he has a spot on TV keeping his Q ratings up among the conservatives because he's funny. Uh -huh. And then he scampers across the liberals and helps them meet their quota because yeah, you exactly. can't. And that's his job. And that's what you get paid to do, Anthony. So, all right. Uh, do, how about some more porn star news, Drift Glass? Got any more porn star news for me? The, the world is full of porn star news, honey, <laughs> but... I prefer to talk about George Nader. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just let the breaking news today and Friday was that uh, brilliant attorney Michael Cohen, the best in the business, the best money can buy, used Trump.org email to negotiate the terms of paying off the porn star because he's so smart. See, OK, no, it just and this this again is is uh, if you needed one more piece of evidence there's no point in trying to reason with these people no at all there's no point in trying to reason with these they're reprogrammable human livestock they but i do think i do think you're going to talk about george nader now because uh -huh. that's a serious story about serious people and serious crimes taking place bribing a porn star is a serious crime and it is also the kind of thing that will have a hook in the public imagination yeah and I just just like many of the things that went on with Roy Moore, uh, again, I say Donald Trump being president was not baked into the cake on these poll numbers. I think a lot of Republican women are going to stay home midterms and and general election. And uh, I don't blame them. I, I really I'll, I'll wait. I believe that there will be a blue wave in the fall. Mm -hmm. I do not believe Republican women will stay home in the numbers you think they will, because I think they are part of the Borg collective. Yeah, yeah. It's simply not possible for them to acknowledge the kind of monster they have become. Yeah, and what kind yeah. And the monsters they're married to. Yep. And the, and the kind of monsters their daddy and the monster was and how sleep, he treated and the them. Yeah. They put up with. They can't do it. They, yep. they would. Their personality would fritz out and, and melt down and implode if they had to look in the mirror and see what really was looking back at him. Right, right, and right. No, I get that. They just can't. So I think they will do exactly what every other Republican is going to do, which is hunker down, shrug it off, talk, think about tax cuts, uh, wave their hands and say, both sides, wave their hands and say fake news. Uh, so what? Bill Clinton did it too. And, and, and slog to the polls in smaller yeah. numbers, in, in, in small enough numbers yeah. for Democrats to win. But they're, they're not going to give up. They right. And we up. can't depend on them staying home. We have to depend on our people showing no. up. Yeah, I agree with is, that. Um, the whole idea that you can't just run against Trump. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, yeah. you can. Running against fascism is a is a policy position yep. that you can take because all roads lead to that point. Absolutely. And and, so, and this his party is enabling him. It would not be happening. This would not be happening if the Congress was full of Democrats at this point. We would this we would be, would be done. Congress this nightmare would be over. Yep. We're full of Republicans from the alternate universe where David Brooks lives, where the yeah. Republican Party is this responsible, thoughtful, Edmund Burke loving party. Yeah. But they're not. They're, they're, not. Uh, they're complicit, traitorous, morons, imbeciles, gun nuts, homophobes, psychopaths. Uh, let's let's race let's race through the news roundup some more. <laughs> so let's go to George Nader. Yeah, uh, who's cooperating with Robert Mueller now? Um, cooperating him, uh, he was a former aide and advisor to the United Arab Emirates, uh, looking into the possibility that the Trump political activities uh, might have taken foreign money uh, through the UAE, mm -hmm. uh, which is of course illegal. <laughs> There's so much illegal. You just, it's like you stick in your thumb and you pull out a plum. Um, there are so many crimes baked into this pie that at some point you realize, oh my God, it's all crime. It's just yeah. all crime. There's, there's a little bit of crust on top. 
and it's all shit and crime underneath. There's no there's no good things. There's no good people there. There's no people who who got swept into this by mistake and woke up one day and and were shocked to discover they'd gone to bed with monsters. It's just it's all shit. Uh, Donald Trump blamed the rising U.S. trade deficits and loss of manufacturing jobs on 30 years of presidential leadership. <laughs> and- really. I can uh, say definitively that that's not true for at least eight years of that um, is uh, I I have a very vivid and distinct memory of the manufacturing policy uh, during the Obama administration. And um, I know for a fact that the Obama administration was the most pro-manufacturing, pro-manufacturing jobs, manufacturing promotion administration since Eisenhower, since at least Eisenhower. Now, if you want to say that thanks to Republicans, you know, the party that just elected Donald Trump, um, a whole bunch of people were uh, were conned into believing that you could just outsource jobs to Mexico forever, pocket the difference, and become rich, and nothing would ever happen. Fine, I agree with you. That's exact. That is that is part of what happened to the man. That was Mitt Romney's job. That was yeah. his thing. Yeah. That point being, it wasn't presidential leadership. It was conservative policy. Mm-hmm. Conservative policies say, look, it doesn't really matter if every fucking factory in the, in the country shuts down. Because T-shirts will be cheaper. Yeah. And net-net, people will pay less for cars and T-shirts, et cetera, ignoring the fact that they won't have any jobs right. for which to pay for these things, no matter how cheap they are. And everybody wanted to take their factory, shut it down, move the jobs across the border, move the jobs across the Pacific, and make money that way because the labor costs are low and the, uh, the environmental protections are non-existent. And they could pocket the difference. What they never calculated was – Eventually, those countries are going to stop taking your workers and they're going to start taking your economic sector. They're going to come for the whole thing. They're going to replicate your factory. And then they're just going to – and that's what all these conservatives suddenly wanted to know. Oh, my God, what happened to manufacturing? Mm -hmm. Well, you did, motherfucker. You did. You chose to do this. You thought it would be cool to fuck your workers out of job. Well, then eventually the the villain got big enough to come and take your whole industry away from you. Very much like – you thought it would be cool to keep electing fascists and scumbags and gun nuts and lunatics until eventually Donald Trump came along. And that was the end point of your effort. You built this, man. You guys built it. And we've you know, been trying to stop you for decades. I want to I want to interrupt you for a minute and, and just talk about women again, because women, uh, conservative women like to get on a and I'm not creating a straw woman here, but because I know women like this who are on a moralistic high horse about abortion. And many of them have discovered, thanks to Fox News and lots of other uh, publicity, uh, which is is for the better, uh, to end human trafficking. And and having, uh, you know, advocacy against human trafficking in the United States is important. However, <laughs> the, the desire of uh, certain women to shop endlessly for cheap clothing and cheap manufactured goods and not ask questions about where is this being made, how much is the other woman who is being paid to manufacture this being paid, and realizing that human trafficking takes a place worldwide. There are goods sold in the United States that are being made by slaves. Yes, there are. They just happen to be over the Pacific, and uh, we don't pay attention to that because we love cheap dresses and we love instant fashion. And I have had to actually stop my daughters from purchasing the El Cheapo, uh, you know, clothing or whatever and and saying, really? $14 for a pair of jeans? Where are they made? It just says imported, Mom. Yeah, that's right. That's all it says is imported. Why is that? And why is this so cheap? And how is it possible for something that's made overseas and has to be brought here? and then put in a store and the store has to be paid and the lights have to be paid and everything has to be paid on that pair of jeans for 14 bucks and no one is thinking about the fact because it's so far away and it's out of sight and one of the early scandals mm -hmm. uh republican scandals the abramoff delay yes right um right mariana islands mariana islands where forced abortions were taking place yeah labor forced abortions but it was made in america and tom delay just sang their praises yep um, yep. About how this because was a you could put a USA capitalism. made in the USA flag on that because it was an American territory. Well, because when he went there, he got to snorkel and golf and enjoy all yeah. of the highlights right. while right. the slave and not see and, and again course. not see anything that was going on behind the cages. Yeah, yeah. He didn't care about it. He didn't no, care. and of course not. He was of course an animal. Not. Yeah. 
And they were all just fucking predators. And they loved the idea that they could get away with murder and get rich doing it. But th- that is, you know, that is the Republican ideal. Yeah. It's the ideal that the the lower order animals, you know, we we scum humans out here in the real world, uh, will get by with nothing. Um, we'll we'll take whatever scraps fall off the table, and a small percentage of them will live very high off the hog forever, and never have to worry about paying uh, their debts, never have to worry about breaking the law, never have to worry about going to jail because they're above it all. That's the I, that is what end stage capitalism looks like. Yeah. Donald Trump is the end product of that process where we shrug it off. Well, you know, golly, it's just business. As usual, um, Tom Delay never went to prison for that. Nope. Um, and no, and, and as far as I know, Abramoff went to school for laundering money for ripping off clients, but not for tra- and not for trafficking in, in human slaves, not for propping that shit up. All right, we uh, got to move on. A- <laughs> Well, and I'm starting other- to get upset now again because it's just such, so much injustice. Well, and some- how do you how do you how do you stop it? I yeah, have, I have some good. Hundreds okay. of Canadian doctors yes. demand lower salaries. Wow, Canada's awesome. Uh, yeah, when it came time for uh, for renegotiating salaries, apparently hundreds of Canadian doctors said, "No, no, no, no. We're making good money already. Take that money and give it to our nurses, support mm-hmm. staff, and patients who are in financial need. Yep. We're doing fine. Thank you very much. You know who used to be like that? Americans used to be like that. Yeah, and then yeah. Ronald Reagan." got into into the bloodstream let's get ronald reagan out of i think we're we're getting ronald reagan out of the american bloodstream as these kids grow up and become uh voters you know let's keep a, that going news. yeah a little, a little bit of good news the blues Brothers yeah just voted the greatest movie ever made in illinois yep which is true it, also it is true basically reintroduced an entire generation to the blues yes it did um, it got a whole bunch of blues artists who were doing fine but were had fallen into obscurity uh cab calloway didn't want to come do the movie because cab calloway was do, busy doing disco moves and other shit like that and they asked him to come do his actual old blues thing from when he was that guy in the 30s and 40s and he, he said nobody wants to hear that shit but they got a whole bunch of people and they 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 i think it was the number one selling blues album in history or number two um uh, but you know who they hated in that movie more than anyone else blue gal illinois nazis hate illinois nazis fucking illinois nazis <laughs> and but you know at the other end of the spectrum you know who's really cool with nazis really okay with nazis well he was okay with them while it, he had a job uh cutting taxes that was gary Cohn, right we always spoke of this yeah, gary Cohn was perfectly cool he did uh, nazi schmazi you know i'm not I'm here for that's the tax, not but. in his portfolio we talked about this yesterday a little yeah, bit yeah did, but I, I thought it would be it made a nice parallel to uh jake and elwood who did <laughs> jake blues who spent time in prison who was an ex-offender uh who was just trying to raise money for that convent uh so what, now we're going to import elephant trophies on a case by case basis which i guess means if eric shoots it he can bring it in uh do you yeah. want to talk about sam nunberg anymore because no that's, no uh, although just just remember sam nunberg was this week folks yeah if that wasn't a that's the ago, time that frame we're week. working on um Trump's personal attorney received leaked witness testimony from within the House Intelligence Committee. Yeah, because it's they're a bunch of ins- corrupt scumbags also. They're coming from inside the House. They're yep. coming from inside the House. And so, all, again, all of them are shit. All of them Kellyanne Conway violated the Hatch Act on two occasions, and nothing will happen about that, and she's not going to comment. So it's all over. That's all over now because we've got other things to talk about. The Office of But that's a crime. The, uh, it is a crime. It's two crimes. Yeah. And, and you know what? Maybe she'll have to wear two ankle bracelets. That, apparently that's all the fashion these days. <laughs> that's that's what Manafort's wearing Manafort's now. wearing matching ankle bracelets. Yeah. He violated the law in two jurisdictions. Way to go, man. Way to go. Um, the Office of Management and Budget has released a report that says regulations, broadly speaking, far outweigh the costs, the benefits of them far outweigh the costs. Yep. Even though it is the most costly regulations you have to put into effect, the benefits of those uh, regulations outweigh the cost. Yes, they do. By like a lot. But the, the, the aggregate amount, the net benefit was $833 billion for, for good, thoughtful regulations that actually, you know, do good in the, in the world. Nearly a trillion dollars worth of value is from um Michael Flynn is selling his house, as you know. Again, somebody wake me when he starts to sell his kidneys. No far, no sorrow for him. Yep. You want to talk about West Virginia teachers, honey? Well, West Virginia teachers uh, actually got uh, the contract that they were promised. And I'm not saying that's as good as they deserve. It isn't. It can't be. But uh, they did get the Republicans in the state Senate to agree. Uh, and that... That is as good as you're going to get in a Republican state. You know, they were they were trying to screw them and they didn't. So good for them. Robert Mueller's yeah, grand jury. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to speed Mueller's... it up here. I shouldn't. But go ahead. Robert Mueller's grand jury uh, issued a subpoena for everybody. Yep. 
<laughs> everybody. Everybody's going to get a subpoena. You get a subpoena. You get a subpoena. You get a subpoena. Uh, I wish they would uh, subpoena a Belarusian, a Belarusian escort. Uh, yeah. Who's alleged, alleged to have more than 16 hours of audio recording that prove Russians meddle in U.S. elections, which is so weird. Is she the one that's in prison in Thailand, yeah. though? Oh, I, that's really weird. That whole story is really weird. I don't know why she's in jail. I don't know why she's in Thailand jail. It's all very, and, and she's begging for her life. She's begging for someone to help her, uh, some news organization to help her get out of jail in Thailand. So. But you know what? Uh, it's not it's it's not as weird as the fact that apparently Russia picked our secretary of state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apparently Trump's uh, Trump was told that not to hire Mitt Romney, but to hire somebody who was more, you know, he should be Moscow. he should be snatched out of office like they did in Brazil. Like, here's a receipt for your president. Just bag him up and pull him through the ceiling for that alone. Someone and I'm not threatening violence here. This is cartoonish, I realize, but he just should not be in the White House. Kapoom, he's gone. A and here's resort, a receipt. Cause... There's a lovely resort called Guantanamo Bay where he right. would fit right You're in gone. a nice orange sump suit. Out. Um, yeah. Yep. No, not 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 so much a good secretary of state. Let's have a more Rex Tillerson need. Right. I'm going to who hasn't spent any of the 120 million dollars budgeted to combat for combat foreign interference in U.S. elections. And we find that 23 of the analysts, all 23 of the analysts who work at the place that's supposed to fight Russian propaganda can't speak Russian. So way to go, man. Way to go. Uh, Jared Kushner and the Qatar blockade. Worst Maury Sendak book ever. <laughs> Drift glass. Apparently right under the <laughs> Let's type that. I didn't type that. Yeah. Jared Kushner and the, and the Cutter Brigade. Yeah, apparently Jared Kushner might have very well uh, uh, induced uh, a blockade against Cutter for money. Yeah, uh, because they wouldn't give him a loan or might have given him a loan or to, to make sure he yes. gives him a loan. Yeah. yeah. Trump Organization <laughs> ordered and then unordered a set of presidential seal replicas for its golf course T markers. Uh, that was a violation of federal law. So they did an oopsie and canceled the order, just like, uh, you know, the HUD furniture, the the, not not the lounge furniture, but the dining room furniture. We also learned yesterday that the Interior Secretary Zinke has a hundred and thirty thousand dollar door that he's uh, uh, purchased for his office at taxpayer expense. And uh, as someone on Twitter said, you never go full Marie Antoinette. <laughs> and I said, really? Because uh, whatever happened to her? I thought it was some backlash to income inequality. And a wonderful person on Twitter said, I think it had something to do with knitting. Oh yeah, yeah it did. Yeah, it did. There's something about 130 grand that is a price point for the purchases of. I want to know of, who's doing. I, there's some DC decorator who's making out, you know, on all these contracts. And a friend of Melania, I'm sure. Yep. Mitch McConnell said the Senate will skip debate on gun legislation and try to deregulate the banking industry. And uh, I have to say, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren called out Democrats by name who voted in favor of that. Yeah, as well she should. As well she should. Um, I would like to point out that Scott Walker is trying to help Foxconn yep. steal Lake Michigan. Yep. Uh, and I'm not being, I'm not kidding. Uh, they want to use something like 7 million gallons of fresh water a day in their manufacturing process. And to get that kind of approval, if you were a community, you'd have to go through a whole bunch of, uh, of filings and ecological reports and mm -hmm. justifications and and many many tiers up to use up that much of of nature's resource limited freshwater resource you would have to prove up a whole bunch of different ways uh but scott walker would just like to help um the manufacturing company he wants to bring to wisconsin uh to do that for free because scott walker is a republican scumbag yep uh drift class we want to keep in our prayers anthony borges anthony borges is 15 years old he is the final patient uh at the broward county medical center uh the uh survivor of the school shooting who is still in the hospital he was shot five times he's in a medically induced coma and uh to recover from these gunshot wounds. And uh, as you have said, there's a uh, email solicitation going out about uh, donating uh, the survivors of the school shooting who are on their feet are working toward um, a march and a campaign and uh, go look for that and support it. Uh, junior dude called last night from college to say they're actually working on getting a bus to take to Washington, D.C. for the March for Our Lives. So excellent. Uh, yeah, you know. 
Get everybody there. That sounds fantastic. Uh, it's time for each week, Drift Glass. I want to thank everybody for listening this week. We we yeah. rushed through this last part, but uh, we love you guys. Well, and we have a, a kind of a long, complicated weekend coming up, so... Not in a bad way. No. <laughs> you want to tell people? Blue Gal's going to do some yarning. I'm going to go yarn this weekend. So Make it's going to be a nice out. little break, yeah, with lots uh, of yarn. I'm going to be in, I'm going to be neck deep in lots of yarn with lots I'm of... I'm going to tag people. along uh, a few hours later with uh, trailing some kids behind. Right, to help me drive my yarn home. Yeah, that's my <laughs> that's my I wish it wasn't that expensive, but I, you know, Drift Class thinks he's going to have a van full of yarn. You're going to have a lunch bag full of yarn for the same I amount know. of money. I promise. I know. <laughs> but I that's know. okay. Is... We're on a budget. That's okay. This is this is my wife's one indulgence every year. Yeah, and, uh, it is. It's, it is. It's, it's my well one time a year. This is I our three weeks in the Seychelles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> If only. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is an internet lamb because, you know, knitting and wool and all that good stuff. This is Pip. Pip belongs to our old friend from Science Fiction University, Dogface Herman, out off on his farm. Uh, and Pip is a baby lamb. Uh, I know that's a, that, you know, I'm duplicating there. Lambs are babies, but oh my gosh, Pip, wait, wait till you see all of the personality in this picture of Pip. Pip is known around the farm as the milk fueled terror lamb. And you can tell, oh my gosh, she's so loved and so cared for and has, and uh, doesn't have any problem looking right at the camera and saying, oh, hi. Yeah. So send your internet pets to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. I want to do a shout out to our angel nerd, Theolo GOP. We want to congratulate uh, and should give a shout out to Theolo GOP, our angel nerd who does all our website stuff. She has been working her tail off in Austin, Texas. Yes. Uh, on behalf of Tawana Cadian, who is running in District 10 uh, for Congress, and she is going to go to Capitol Hill. I tell you, she's made it to the runoff. She's a fantastic uh, progressive candidate, and uh, Lady Theolo GOP, Theolo GOP on Twitter, has been working very, very hard on her behalf, on Tawana's behalf. Tawana made it to the to a runoff, and we are so excited for everyone involved in that campaign, and so uh, we want to do a shout-out, and and just so grateful for all of the work that people are doing on these congressional campaigns to flip these districts. It is fantastic. It really is. And you need to do it. And, uh, you know, we got Beto O'Rourke is now the nominee in Texas for the Senate to take Ted Cruz out. And what does Ted Cruz do, the stupid head? He, you know, he decides to make fun of Beto O'Rourke's name when we're talking about you know, Eduardo, what, what is Ted Cruz's Rafael real name? Cruz. Rafael Eduardo Cruz yeah. decides yeah, that you know, out yeah. of the bucket, he's going to make fun of Beto O'Rourke. Yeah. You know, Beto O'Rourke only changed his name, uh, started calling himself that to, to try to fit in with people and just uh, sell himself. Says Rafael fucking Cruz. Right. Canadian. Ted, Ted Cruz. <laughs> Canadian Cuban Rafael Cruz decides to make fun of that. Okay. Get him out of office. Yeah, get him out. He's, he's very, he's just got to go. Bad. Gotta go. All right. We know Texas is a tough, is has always been and may always be. I don't know. We'll see how demographic, which things. I have a lot of hope for Texas. But, uh, you know, it is it is a 60-40 state or a 65-35 state for Republicans. And, boy, it's, a, it's hard to wedge those guys out of their, their trows. But I think I think demography is on our side. And I know mor the moral majority is on our side. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for people like the yellow GOP out there hustling and getting it done. Thank you. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware. I've already read that. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. And please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you very much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing? this week. Blue gal, the internet kitties have never, to my knowledge, violated the Hatch Act. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. 
Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.